All right. Good afternoon. Uh, this is the one o'clock operations committee on February the 24th. This time, call to order. Uh, roll call. Here. Alderman Neversmeyer. Here. Alderman Lesh. Here. Robert Brueggemann. Here. Steve Roth. Here. All right. Our first uh, order of business, new business. Uh, I guess we'll start with the project review, lift station two slash headworks facility improvement. Uh, I guess we have a presentation or? Yeah, I'll, I'll get it started. Um, Thank you all for being here, first of all. Jeff Meadows, Ken Campbell are with CM Archer Group, PC, Archer Elgin Engineering. Um, we've been working on this project literally for probably two years. Um, and we opened bids earlier this month and we wanted to schedule this meeting to uh, brief the board basically on this project, the Lift Station 2 Headworks project that we have um, that we open bids on, and then also other elements of the sewer project as well. So um, I can turn it over to Jeff, and um, Jeff, if you would kind of get us up to speed on the project and sure. uh, where we're at. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. On the screen, uh, it's not on these screens. Mm -hmm. I'll get it. Okay. Um, is an area which is we refer to as the Brush Creek uh, sewer shed. So the, when we first were, got involved in, uh, in this area, the city's been having some, um, some sanitary sewer overflows as a result of wet weather in this area, and they have, and we have for some time. So uh, we were looking at what, what the causes were. We did a study on, on the area um, a few years ago. We actually mapped the, the red line, is what we referred to as the Brush Creek uh, interceptor line. So that's the main gravity line. It's 24 to uh, inches or, or so in diameter. It's a, it's a big line. It collects sewer from the north and, to the, and from the south, um, takes it down to, and on the far right hand side is the lift station number two. It also collects on the far left hand side uh, sewer from Brush Creek Sewer District from a, from a lift station over there. So. Um, and on a normal dry weather day like today, no issues. We have plenty of capacity. It rains a little bit, then we start having capacity issues. So, um, I, and I know that's been a point of discussion with uh, Brush Creek Sewer District over time. They're, they had a maximum amount in, in their contract of how much they can discharge, um, and which you know, they, they bump up against that at, at certain times. But the study that we did looked at not just the, and that's based, their contract is based upon an, the, your daily flow. The, the study that we did looked at instantaneous flow, how much is in there at any given time. And that's what's really important when you're, when you're looking at uh, peak flows because a lot of times the, the inflow and infiltration from rainwater comes in an, in an instant and it, and it uh, and it's quickly comes, quickly goes. So a 24 hour daily flow doesn't mean a whole lot. So when we looked at that, we saw that the city has a lot of inflow and infiltration in their system, so they're in, in your system, so that's it, a concern that we, we need to address. Um, but um, we also see that the Brush Creek uh, lift station pumps at a capacity when, when both pumps are pumping, it, ha it takes up almost the entire uh, capacity of that of that interceptor line. So when that occurs, when we when we're getting um, the high I and I flows from both the city and from Brush Creek, that's when we started seeing some um, some sanitary sewer overflows. That means it comes out of manholes. I, I know we've had some some backups in, into the cedars. Uh, much of that has been reduced by some improvements that the city has made over the last few years. Um, and then ultimately, lift station two was under capacity as well. So that kind of brings us to, to the project that we're discussing today. The, the project is lift station two improvements, which increases the capacity of that lift station, uh, but then also a new force main. Currently it ties into an existing force main that carries other sewage from the city. Uh, we're actually installing a new force main and taking it all the way to the, to the wastewater treatment facility. Um, 
So that's those two, that, that item, the lift station and the force main, that's contract A that we'll be talking about. Contract B is what's referred to as the headworks and everything, all the flow that comes to the wastewater facility before it gets uh, discharged into, into the lagoon itself, there's a, a headworks building and equipment. It has a screen in it um, and takes some of the, the core solids and, and, uh, and then has a large manifold that discharges it in, into three different locations and in, into the lagoon itself. So by increasing the, the capacity of lift station number two, um, we're exceeding the capacity of that headworks facility of the screen. Uh, plus, that screen and the whole building itself are way beyond their, their life, their useful life. That's a very corrosive atmosphere with the, all the gases being discharged from that force main. Uh, the mechanical ventilation equipment has failed over the years, so the building itself is uh, quite deteriorated. Um, and the screen also is, is beyond its useful life as well. So that caused us, by, by having to look at expanding that, um, we looked at a couple of different options. Do we just add some additional capacity to the existing building? But it, the most cost-effective approach was to replace that entire headworks facility um, and, and uh, accommodate this flow and also some future improvements that we'll, we'll talk about in a little bit. So that, that's contract A is the pump station force main. Contract B is the headworks facility. That's what we just bid. There's a, gonna be a subsequent phase which replaces the uh, interceptor line, that red line on that first drawing that, that collects all the sewer along Brush Creek. Jeff, just uh, quickly, you kind of touched on it earlier, but percentage terms, roughly lift station two pumps, how much of the city sewage? Cities. Yeah. Okay. About forty percent of the of the treatment facility flow would probably be so that's also picking up some of the, the brush creek flow as well. So I mean that's kind of an overview of 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 how we got to this point and, and what we uh, opened bids on uh, last week. So I mentioned contract A is the lift station and force main. Uh, we, bid it, we bid these in two different contracts, um, partly because of uh, the, the size of the contracts and, and uh, um, the, the workload that some of the contractors are seeing, um, but primarily because it's really two different types of, of contractors that be doing this work. Uh, contract A is more of a line work and, and small structure uh, contractor. Uh, contract B, the headworks facility, is more of like a wastewater treatment facility, more of a plant type uh, contractor. We also gave the opportunity, some contractors have both capabilities or capability to do both of them efficiently. We also gave them an option as if it is more efficient for you to do both of them. And so you, you, if you gain this efficiency by bidding both, you don't have to have as much project management and oversight and so forth. If you were awarded both, what would you do both of them for? Um, that, in, that didn't turn out to be the case, but uh, we gave the, the contractors that option. Uh, contract A, we received a total of five bids. Uh, our estimate was 2.2 million. Uh, you can see on the cover sheet there, the low bidder is KJ Understall at 1.889 million. Um, Gardner and, and Kelpie Contracting, just both just a little over two. So a very good tight um, grouping of the three low bids and, and that portion was, was under our estimate. So we're, we're pleased with, with that bid. Uh, the contract B, uh, we, had, we only had two bidders, um, being T. Drury Contracting, um, I believe they're south of St. Louis, somewhere in the St. Genevieve County area and Contegra Construction from, from Western Illinois. Uh, worked with both contractors in the past, uh, had good, good experience. Um, T. Drury Contracting was the low at 2.2 million, uh, which is well above our engineer's estimate. So uh, it's, it's nice to have two bids that are, that are so tight and close. Looks like that they had the same thoughts about the contract. So it, it, 
you know, made us wonder, you know, where did we miss in, in our in our estimate? Uh, we actually had a meeting with the with T. Drury earlier this week uh, to kind of talk through, you know, the, the purpose of the meeting. We went out to the site um, and and looked at the, the the work and where the work would be built. Talked through some of the more critical components of the work, as in, in our mind, and and to make sure that they didn't have a, you know, that we represented the work correctly on the drawings, that they didn't have a misunderstanding of what we were looking for. We felt like, you know, based upon that conversation that they did, they had a very good understanding, they had a very good approach to how they were going to, to look at the work and approach the work. Uh, so, you know, from that point, you know, where did, where's the difference in, in our numbers? Um, and that kind of, if you below that table on the cover sheet that I, that I handed out, um, they provided us a kind of a, a rough schedule of values. It's not as, as detailed as what we'll receive once the project has been awarded, but the, the vast majority, uh, I'd say nearly all of the discrepancy is in the materials. Uh, so, I mean, I think their approach, the, the actual work and so forth was consistent with, you know, with what we had anticipated, but we're seeing a, you know, 30% increase in, in concrete cost, and that, you know, just ready make ready uh, mix concrete. Uh, the site piping, you know, site work and piping, uh, or the pipe cost itself is, PVC specifically is, has increased um, by two or three times in the last several months. Um, the building is uh, also in those in the handouts behind the, the first two aerial photos, there's a um, kind of a section of the Headworks building itself. I mentioned to you earlier that uh, it's a very corrosive environment in this. So that's uh, all the wa all the wastewater, the raw wastewater comes in through this force main, airtight, uh, absent of oxygen for the entire way from the pump station to the treatment facility. So it builds up uh, hydrogen sulfide, and when it's when it sees air, then it releases hydrogen sulfide gas, uh, which is very corrosive. Um, so the building itself, it's a, a block building, uh, the, the superstructure, the, the trusses and, and roof and so forth, uh, they're not wood, uh, they're, they're, they're made of material that are, is gonna be resistant to that type of, of environment. Uh, so electrical and so forth are all, all designed to, to accommodate that. Uh, there's also a, a very, um, kind of, uh, Pretty hefty mechanical uh, ventilation system to that by code requires that you, there has to be a certain number of air exchanges over a period of time. So, uh, so the it's a as far as buildings go, it's it's a, a expensive building per square foot, and and those are the reasons. So, um, and the, the the building at cost was a little bit higher than what we had anticipated, but but not that much. The electrical was another uh, of the items that was quite a bit higher than what we anticipated. The, uh, and again, we talked through, is there something in the drawings that, uh, you, that popped out to the contractor as maybe we could have done something a little less expensive? And you know, they talked about maybe some light fixtures and that type of thing, but nothing that's gonna grab a, you know, a big lump, uh, lump sum of dollars. So uh, again, I think we, believe that it seems like that is just a, a cost of materials increase over the period of time from, from we did the estimate to, to bid date. To give you an idea, the, there's such a fluctuation in material price right now, the, and they talked about this, and we've heard it from other contractors and other <coughs> suppliers, um, that you know, the, the, their quotes for pipe may, are not necessarily, you know, used to be it would be, they'd be good for 90 days or, or however long, and uh, today they're they're good for essentially for that bid day uh, because they're the suppliers themselves are seeing such a fluctuation so I'm sure there's from the supplier standpoint and maybe even the contractor standpoint there's a little bit of, of safety factor in that to accommodate for, for that risk as well um, yeah so we talked about because of the you know the, the cost increase or more than what we had anticipated are there other options um, I don't, you know, we talked through the design. I, I don't believe, um, you know, the only other option is would be go without a building completely, 
have an outdoor screening facility that comes with a, a lot of operations, a lot of safety concerns. Um, I, that doesn't, I don't think that's attractive from, from the, to the city from an operations standpoint. We, so I don't know that there's a big change in the, in the project that we could look at that would reduce the scope enough that would merit um, rebidding the project uh, you know, in, in the short term. The, you know, and I don't think that we're gonna see any, um, any changes in the, in the market both materials and contractor in, in the near future. Uh, we're seeing, there's gonna, in fact, we're probably ahead of a, a pretty good uh, wave of water, wastewater type work hitting the market. So I, that's, it was, that's why we wanted to hurry and get this out to bid this, this spring. So I don't anticipate that we would, in the coming months, that we would see a reduction in, in construction costs across the board. Um, I did mention that the city has had these uh, these sanitary sewer overflows that um, we that have caused violations. DNR has has been in contact with with the city. Um, in fact, they were waiting on these bid results and the schedule for the interceptor line, the the next phase, so that they could develop an agreement with the city that says these these improvements will be done by on this schedule uh, and. That agreement then would protect the city from any uh, future fines or, or violations. So that's kind of in the process, but waiting on on this. So uh, I don't believe, from that aspect as well, that pushing this off into the future is is realistic. So it would be our recommendation to accept both low bidders. Uh, KJ Understall is uh, has worked with the city and uh, and I think had good. Uh, good relationship with the city. Uh, T. Drury, I don't believe has. Uh, we've worked with them years ago. Um, they bid a lot of our, our work, just hasn't, haven't been successful. Um, but they have they come with a very good reputation, good references, so have no issue. And, and certainly based upon the, the meeting and conversation and the questions they asked during the bidding process, we feel they have a good, good handle on the project. And uh, so we have no problem recommending them as well. Uh, any questions? Questions? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I got a couple questions. Um, so where does this put us in line for future growth? You know, is this going to, is this just getting us caught up to where we're solving the problems today? Or, you know, I know we got future development areas and stuff that we got marked out down here. But is this going to be good enough to handle expansion for the, you know, into the future? We looked at future flows uh, for the design of this lift station and, and for the for the headworks as well. So yeah, we looked at, at twenty year projections and and on the topic like third topic on the, the agenda, we're going to talk a little bit more about the future planning of the wastewater treatment facility itself. But in ahead of that, we actually did look at these these future projections. The key part of, of the design of this facility, it's it the flow it's based upon is peak flow. So that, that high flow, instantaneous flow. Um, we would anticipate new, new development is not gonna bring more inflow and infiltration. So any new flow is not gonna have those big peaks that we see today from, from the old infrastructure. Uh, and, and as well, the city has ongoing um, inflow and infiltration improvement work. They're, they're correcting a lot of that, they're lining a lot of, of uh, gravity mains and so forth in effort to reduce that peak flow. So I, I don't anticipate seeing a, a big increase in, in your peak flow, which would impact these two facilities. Robert, uh, with Understall, now I think Understall installed a brush creek, didn't they? No, <clears throat> this is KJU, this is out of Washington. Oh, did they? Okay. Yeah. Uh, KJU, they did a 10 inch water main forest up on uh, North First Street going up over where Landing Hub and stuff is now. They did that one a couple of years for us. They're actually doing the bridge now, Denton Road Bridge. Okay. Yeah, that's KJ Understall. So you're happy with the contractors working yes. with the yeah. little the contractors? Yeah, we've, yeah, we've worked with KJ Understall a number of times. They've done some uh, stormwater work for us and everything else. Um, the T. Drury, I haven't, we had to rely on them because they've never bid. I don't think they've even bid for us that I know of. So we haven't worked with them before, but Okay. But yeah, the KJ Understall is 
They said they're doing work for us as we speak. <laughs> Uh, <coughs> you got one more question? Oh, go ahead. Have we looked at any of their previous work on other job sites, other projects? As in? For other cities that uh, Drury has done? I know they vetted them. Yeah, yeah we, we worked with them years ago. Uh, it's been, been several years. We, we do have references from, from other work that they do. They do a lot of work in, in St. Louis County uh, for Missouri American Water. Um, and so we, we've called some references and, and had uh, they have a, an excellent reputation. Okay, good. My, my other question was, probably don't have this number, but do we have an approximation of how much infiltration is happening? So how much, once that gets solved, we'll, we'll gain back? Yeah, the, it's hard to say how much we'll gain. You know, that's a, inf, inflow and infiltration is very elusive, and, it, yeah. and you know, there's no uh, single point where it comes. But, uh, you know, if, if you take a look at our, our average day flow at the at the wastewater treatment facility is about 1.5 million gallons a day, mm -hmm. and the the peak or this headworks facility is designed for 12, a little over 12 million gallons a day. So, a, a, you know, a 12 to one factor, in in that. So largely, this is uh, this is an expansion for future growth in the city. It's it's going to take you know nearly that much just to accommodate the existing. Uh, there's just that much inflow and infiltration into the to the system currently, oh, but there is some that, yeah, there is some future growth in there as well. Okay. And like he, he stated before, we the last couple of years we've been doing close to two and a half miles each year um, of the CIPP work, which is drastically you know, that's going to help. And the more we keep doing that, the more it's going to help. Problem is, you can we can line all the mains, and have you could have all new line mains, but you're still going to have houses that have infiltration. I mean, there's still a lot of factors. I mean, all we can do is what we can do on the mains. So we've been proactive with that, and that's also helped with sewer backup. <coughs> too. For the last two years, we've only had one sewer backup claim, and that was actually due to a rain event. It wasn't with roots, so. So the lining helps with infiltration and also with backups as well. So it's, it's good right. progress. So we've been making good progress with that. So we want to keep keep doing that, you know, that work. But uh, but we don't we don't have much control. I mean, you still have Brush Creek that has quite a bit of infiltration and stuff too. So. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Sure. Steve, you got anything? Not really. I, we should have noted that we did apply um, for ARPA funds for this project through the state of Missouri. And I think that application was probably submitted back in last summer, if I recall correctly, Jeff. And um, obviously we didn't get that. There were many, I mean, 300, I don't think that's an exaggeration, um, projects from all over the state of Missouri. No project within our local area was funded. Um, Obviously, ours wasn't. So, um, <clears throat> once we um, once we learned that we didn't get funded, of course, then as Jeff said earlier, we really want to get the project out to bid ASAP, mainly because with ARPA, there's so much water and wastewater work and other infrastructure work that we just wanted to get it out quickly. Um, and of course, the lift station two bid came in under estimate, which was awesome, great. Um, Headworks facility was over, which, you know, ideally that wouldn't happen. But I do, uh, Jeff has met with the contractor, as he discussed, and um, based on everything I understand, I think, um, I would agree, I think um, it's a good bid and, you know, I would support the engineer's recommendation. All right. The, um, so I guess now, uh, we need a motion to move this forward to the, the board uh, or well I had one other question uh, we'll probably go into it more if, when and if it does go forward to the board but how's the financing for this project going to happen um, so detailed discussion of financing is for a different day different me meeting um, we've looked at various options uh, we've we, it has to be financed we don't we've got I think 1.3 million in the bank right now for sewer uh, we don't have an immediate need for financing, meaning even if the contract is awarded in March, um, by the time that first pay up comes in, 
um, we would have uh, existing revenues to um, fund the project for some period of time. So um, I'm looking at maybe July, August, September for the finance need. So we got a little time to work on it. Um, this year? Yes. <clears throat> um, so I maybe just stop there. Well, let, me, let me say one other thing. Um, it will require a rate increase. Um, and, but, and I haven't really got far enough into it to really determine the, the total level of rate increase needed. Um, but I would note today our 5,000 gallon rate, which we call the household rate, um, right now is I think 33, going from memory here, I think it's around $33 per month. Um, 12.57 minimum charge and then $4.14 per thousand. So when you compare that to other cities, other sewer districts, other um, utilities, we are on the low end. Um, I do believe we can, the, the level of rate increase um, is gonna be very moderate. I'm very confident saying that. I don't think that we'd have to see a spike in our rates that would, um, that would put us well over other area agencies. Um, we got, our, our sewer rate right now is frankly low. And uh, in order to fund this, I think we would get, we would have to increase um, to what I would still consider to be the lower end of the, uh, the going rate in the region. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sarah? Yeah, one more. I think if I remember it. Oh, the, the force main that we, uh, I think we approved it. Is it is it a different force main than the one you're talking about on this project that we approved in the board meeting this week? Pre pre uh, the, the different. Different? Okay. Yes. Not to be confused yep. with the one we're talking about. Yeah, this that one, okay. that one was, is for lift station five, and that work was done a while ago. Um, but we got hung up in the railroad permitting, and so we... The board, of course, approved Tuesday night that license agreement, and we need to submit that into BNSF, get the permitting, and then we'll, we'll finally get that new force main built. Okay. Just a I count from next steps as well. Um, once the contract is approved, it'll be about 30, or once the city, should the city uh, approve the award of the contracts, uh, it'll be about 30 days before contract execution. Uh, and then it's about a 12-month uh, construction contract um, plus a few, a couple months for, that's to substantial completion, plus a few months for uh, <coughs> final completion. So we're looking about 15 months from contract execution to wow, complete. That, okay. That was another question I remember I was having. Are, how is the contract handle cost overruns on materials? Is, are those locked in in the beginning, or are we subject to those overruns? They're locked in at the beginning. Okay. And, and yeah, I mean, it, we have we've never uh, we have seen some just extraordinary issues that uh, we've uh, had to consider, but I mean, for the most part, they're they're locked in. The so the in. materials good. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Or you need a motion for us to. Have this move forward? Um, sure, that'd be helpful. Yes. Do I have a motion to? I'll, I'll make the motion to move this forward to the Board of Aldermen at their next meeting. I'll second. Is there a second that? Uh, all, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Let's move that forward then. Thank you. All right, the next topic under due business is the Brush Creek Sewer District update. Yeah, I'll handle that. Jeff's been involved, of course, but um, this project uh, does benefit Brush Creek Sewer District. It increases um, the city's receiving capacity to Brush Creek. Um, and then the city uh, raised the rate to Brush Creek Sewer District some time ago um, in anticipation of this project. Uh, so again, it, it, it benefits them. Of course, they're paying uh, their proportional share. Um, Try, I'll try to make it brief. Um, there's an agreement from, from the early 2000s when Brush Creek Sewer District was first formed uh, that we have been in discussions with the district for some time. We have very recently um, basically come to an agreement um, on 
we, we want to raise the um, the daily the, the the maximum daily flow. We want to increase that some factor, um, and then we want to put language in the agreement that relates to the compliance issues with MDNR. And the board will be seeing this agreement very soon. Uh, the county is um, considering it now, and assuming the county would approve it, then it would come to us. Uh, so I don't want to get in much more detail than that, but it's it's very close um, to to coming to the board here. Um, the other part of the Brush Creek Sewer District piece is that the district was awarded a uh, ARPA. There was a legislative award. Jeff, real quick, what is, what's the technical term? Um, legislative priority project. Okay, Missouri legislature. Um, essentially awarded Brush Creek Sewer District 2.875 million, I think that's the number, just, sh just shy of 3 million. And it was a legislative priority award, it was kind of outside of the, um, the, grant, um, the grant cycle. And so we have been um, in discussions with Brush Creek Sewer District about how that will work, right? It's their award, not ours, but it essentially is for, um, the same project in so many words. And so when you ask about financing, it, we really would like to get clarity on this piece and just how it may be um, used in the context of this project, of course, before we go off onto a financing, um, down a financing path. So there are some moving parts, it gets kind of complicated. Um, and there's no guarantee here. We don't know for sure that the money will, um, will in fact come to this project that's beyond our control, uh, but we are hopeful for it. And I think there's a general understanding between us and the district that you know, we wanna to work together to make it happen, so. All right. Any questions? Je before we move off that, Jeff, is there anything that you might wanna to add to that? Okay, all right, thanks. All right, let's go on to the, uh, the third of the 2026 permit requirements for ammonia disinfection. Um, yeah, I'll start, and then Robert um, gave you the uh, committee here um, some great information earlier, and then of course Jeff can, can fill in. We have a permit for our discharge, um, and I guess that permit was, Dates from what date? Was it 2016? I think it was the 10-year permit. Okay. Um, and so we'd known for some time that we were gonna have to uh, address ammonia in that new permit. And a lot of the work we've done in recent years has been with that in mind. Of course, we know that's coming. And as Robert said in his report to you all, we, we've had excellent results. I mean, a lot of our numbers are just really great. Now, we, we have exceedances as well. Um, it, but having said all that, we still need to um, evaluate uh, the situation and make some improvements in order to come into compliance by 2026. In the sewer world, 2026, and when you think about planning big projects, I mean, it, it requires us to get working on it now. Um, so, Jeff, if actually before Jeff, Robert, you got anything to add on that? Yeah, I mean, uh, if you took a look, you know, took a look at my uh, ammonia report that I submit to DNR once a year, uh, you can kind of see early 2018, pretty much every month. And these aren't current exceedances in the red. These are because right now we're just monitoring only. So what DNR does is when they give you a new permit, they have you monitor only. You know, they'll have you monitor it for. X amount of years, and then you kind of know that's going to be your next thing in your permit. <clears throat> so we've been, you know, monitoring it for, you know, since 2018. <clears throat> but what I, I put it in red is because in 2000, July 1st of 2026, uh, the ones that you see in red, those would be, you know, exceedances in the future. <clears throat> so you can see 2018, not so great. Uh, 2019, was okay, but then you can see where uh, we added the new aeration system, and then when Smith Food started their pretreatment, <clears throat> after those two instances, it's gotten quite a, you know drastically better. <clears throat> We've had a lot better numbers, you know, 
other than just ammonia. Um, the problem we have is when you're coming out of you know, pretty well winter and coming out of the winter months in the first spring, that's when the lagoon has a hard time nitrifying that bacteria and, and getting your getting the ammonia levels down. <clears throat> so that's where we're looking at uh, so upgrades to the lagoon for ammonia removal, you know, specifically. And I guess, I don't know, Jeff, you want to elaborate on that, but that's kind of what we're going towards. So how do we fix that? <clears throat> well, we do a study. <laughs> uh, the, in, your, in your packet, there was a paper clip. So if you take the paper clip off, clip off and there's a one-page sheet that <coughs> talks through uh, how we would approach that. So the, the first bullet there is a wastewater treatment facility regulatory drivers. So as Steve and, and Robert talked, there's a, we have a schedule of compliance uh, for ammonia. Uh, which we have to be in compliance with by July 1st of 2026. Um, there are the new limits uh, that Robert had listed in his handout and that monitoring review. And that, so all of those items in red uh, come July 20 of 2026, we would no longer be in compliance in, on those months. Um, in addition to that, we have a phos phosphorus limit. Any plant over a million gallons a day, ours is currently rated at 2 million gallons a day. Um, we're anticipating a new schedule of compliance in 2033 for phosphorus. So those are those are two from a from a treatment capability standpoint. Those are two items that we'll need to look at of how we're going to achieve achieve those. The good news on the phosphorus is the the Headworks facility uh, that we just talked about and and received bids on. Um, the, we're going to achieve the, the phosphorus removal by chemical addition, most likely. Um, and that, and it'll occur as the flow comes into, into the facility. So we actually um, designed that facility to accommodate, have a little room in electrical and so forth to accommodate new equipment when it's time to meet that, that limit. So um, we've, we should be a, a few steps ahead on that, on that limit when it comes down. <coughs> The other thing that we're that we'll want to look at is the the, the you know, future population growth and, and flow projections. You know, we talked about our current um, our capacity is two million gallons a day. Uh, we're seeing on the influent side about a million and a half gallons a day today. That's on average. So that includes our our inflow and infiltration and and our daily daily flow. Uh, if you look at just some, uh, we went through, we looked at historical growth and, and uh, did a few different types of projections. I mean, I think it's, I think we'd probably ag agree that, that Pacific is, is, would anticipate some pretty good growth in the future. Um, so uh, we took a look at kind of the, the higher growth rate of the, of the several different that we looked at and projected what that, that growth would be over the next 20 years. Uh, typically, when we do a, a facility plan for a treatment facility, we look at a 20-year time frame, partly because uh, it's, you know, it's hard to project 20 years anyway, but it's, you know, not very easy to project further than that. Um, and then you also, we don't know what the regulations are going to be, but primarily the equipment only has a, a life of, of somewhere in that 20-year time, time frame. So, so we look at a 20-year growth projection. So that's going to put us 20 years out in the second table uh, at 2.27, 2.3 million gallons a day, which is over our current capacity. So we're going to want to look at, at how we achieve that increase in, in capacity as well. Um, which, you know, kind of our, our initial thoughts, I mean, that's part of the analysis, but we do anticipate that that's, that's achievable within the footprint of your of your facility, so we'll we'll run through all the calculations, and and that's part of that that scope. So our lagoons and all that stuff down there are big enough to handle more. We believe that that yeah that the the actual volume, you know, it's going to require some some more equipment, some more aeration, some more operations. But uh, we we believe that it uh, we're, we don't believe we're going to have to build a bigger lagoon to to increase have an increase in capacity. And then the nitrification <laughs> improvements, that's associated with the, 
the ammonia, new ammonia limit. Uh, that's going to require a, a separate process. And, and as Robert mentioned, um, the, the most difficult time to achieve those new ammonia limits is going to be in the winter time. The nitrifying bacteria, they don't like the cold weather. So there's going to likely, there's several different manufacturers out there that will evaluate and compare. Um, but will there likely be a separate basin? Um, that, and they achieve a, a higher temperature in different ways. Some of them heat them, some of them cover them and, and you know, but ultimately that we need a little bit higher water temperature than what we see in a lagoon in, in the winter time. So, um, so that's, that's part of it, looking at different alternatives, developing cost estimates and so forth to, of how to meet that uh, ammonia limit. And then in, those parts of the lagoon would be directed towards uh, certain industries you're saying? Certain, not all the flows going in there? It'd be all the flow, yeah. So uh, everything, yeah, there, it's what we're, the limit is based upon the amount of ammonia that is discharged to the river. So we would, we need, we need to, whatever's coming into the facility from all of your users has to be taken down before it, before it discharges. Okay. Maybe, a, maybe like another step in the process. So it like right now it goes through 1A and then 1B and then probably they go through something like one of the processes we've been looking at is like MBBR is a moving bed by moving bed by a reactor, which is usually heated. Um, and then so it, you know, it'd be like in a concrete, you know, you know, contain, you know, itself and then it'd come out of that and then go back into two. So it's not like another lagoon. Not it'd a be, separate. It'd be an actual separate entity on its own. It would, yeah, the, the just flow be, back into the other. Be, yeah, it'd be adding, adding, in, you know, adding into the process. We yeah, I'll, well, on that question, I if, don't want to get too far out of what you were saying, but your report was showing the numbers were higher, and there was a January number in there that went off. Was that a, an accurate measurement, or was there yeah, a reason? Yeah, no, I mean, a lot of it has to do, you know, we're still working with the dairy, so a lot of that has to do with the dairies, uh, you know, through surcharging, you know, and, and you know, we're still monitoring that, and we're still billing them, you know, accordingly. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of it has to do with weather and the dairy. There's a lot of different things. So. Yeah, and as I saw that notated on there, it, it seems that those industries that are in there. So my my question is, for us, when people come to us in the future and developing down there and there for industrial, is there certain industries that we need to take note of and oh, that they're yeah. going to be adding a big Yeah, there's definitely, big stress if anybody on comes in, I mean, there's definitely things that you want to, like, keep out, <laughs> and, and a lack of better words. But, yeah, I mean, a dairy that's, you know, for a lagoon to process dairy waste is very difficult. It's a high, very high load. So food um, processing industry. <clears throat> yeah. Would that be I mean, you wouldn't want like a meat packing plant that's giving you a lot of blood because that's going to give you really high ammonia levels because when protein breaks down, it turns into ammonia. So there's certain certain things that, you know, you know, we have red flags on. I mean, we've had people approach us before if it's wanting to come into town and like, no, nope, if you can't meet these certain limits, you know, we have or, you know, limits in our ordinances. And, uh, you know, the dairy kind of, came in on the radar with you know, a lot of supposed to be a lot of powdered products and then they kind of came in and next thing you know they're adding on everybody's happy you know the workers are happy because they're you know the contractors happy they're adding on to their plant they're built you know they're bringing in more employees but then next thing you know they got milk trucks coming in so uh, in August they were bought out by Dairy Farmers of America which is a bigger corporation and since they've bought out they've been a lot better to work with they've they're really trying to get their process under control and, and work on a lot better. I mean, they spent they spent over two million dollars themselves putting uh, a pretreatment plant in, you know, to keep us from surcharging them to death. Because I mean, there's quite a few months uh, surcharge them forty thousand, sixty thousand dollars a month uh, it's because of their overages from our ordinances. Okay, all right, thank you. <clears throat> they don't want to. They don't want to keep paying that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, the next item, we're in looking at the you know, the work we did on the headworks facility at the plant and uh, replacing the blowers and so forth previously. Uh, we're anticipating that there there may be a, a elect, we need to increase the capacity of your electrical service. So that's something that we'll also look at in the study. Um, and of course, I mentioned the the phosphorus removal earlier. So those are all components of of the study that we'll be looking at and and the. The purpose of it is it's a planning document. We know we have to do this. We have to meet these limits in 2026. 
So what's the next step? Well, this is the uh, this will tell us what that next step is. It'll give us um, a recommendation on this is the type of of uh, um, a process that will that we recommend moving forward with into design. This is an anticipated cost estimate for that, which allows the city to make decisions on financing and, and planning and, and so forth. Questions? Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, Steve, do you need those to execute anything on that? That was more informational than. I think it is more informational. In, in the in the meeting packet, uh, we do have a contract for from them um, to do the preliminary engineering report uh, necessary to start that 2026 ammonia um, requirement planning. Um, I don't know, I mean, if Jeff's already touched on it to some degree, um, maybe since you're together, maybe it would be helpful just to uh, recommend moving it forward uh, to the full board. Um, I think it's time, in, in fairness to Jeff, we have, um, I mean, myself primarily have, have um, wanted to get through some other items before we got to this. and. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, again, the ARPA, all that, um, trying to figure out the Brush Creek Sewer District piece, so forth. So we're getting close to conclusion there, not to the um, exact finish line, but it is time to shift gears a little bit and move on this. Um, so I think, again, if you all want to recommend it move forward to the board, we'd be prepared to bring it to the board at the next meeting. I'll make a motion for that. All right, is there a second? I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 That passes. Anything else you need? That's it. Again, I really appreciate um, you guys going over this. I think it's good for both the committee and, of course, the public in general to understand where we're at with this. Um, but no, I don't have anything. Do you, Robert? No. I actually doing some pre-work without even having a contract yet, because a lot of us have done for us without even being under contract yet. And uh, I've been sending Ken every week I send him. We've been doing some extra sampling on the influent, and I put that in report, but we're doing some extra sampling to get ahead of the game, kind of see where we need to be. Uh, so yeah, I would appreciate it if they can actually get them under contract so they can actually start working on it. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> All right, then we'll close out the news business. I don't have anything under old business. Uh, miscellaneous. Steve, you have anything? Nothing. All right. And that is it. Unless somebody, you, you got anything? You have anything? No. All right, I will take a motion to adjourn. Or to uh, wait a second, wait a second. Do you need us to approve the minutes of the last meeting? I need a motion yeah, to approve. Motion to approve the minutes from the previous meeting. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 And motion to adjourn? Is it too early? Second. I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.